everyone, my name is Chris, and in this video, we will kick off the PyTeal video series by talking about what PyTeal is and why it's one of the best ways to build smart contracts on Algorand. Also, make sure to check out the Beaker Framework series overlaying on the top right of this video right now to learn how Beaker wraps PyTeal and makes writing smart contracts with PyTeal even easier. So what is PyTeal? PyTeal is a Python library that lets you write Algorand smart contracts with Python-like syntax. I say Python-like syntax because PyTeal programs are not really written with Python, but are collections of PyTeal expressions composed of other PyTeal expressions. Now don't worry if you don't really understand what I mean here, there will be a separate video just on PyTeal expressions. So this is how it works under the hood. When you write your Algorand smart contract with PyTeal, you use the PyTeal's compile program method to produce teal code automatically. Teal is a shorthand for transaction execution approval language, and it's a low-level assembly language that can be easily compiled to bytecode for the Algorand virtual machine to execute. Even if you write your smart contract with PyTeal, it will greatly help you to understand how your contract works by learning about how Teal works and what capabilities the AVM has. So be sure to check out the Teal series that should be popping up on the top right. Now let's look at a simple counter example written with PyTeal to get a feel of what a PyTeal smart contract looks like. Before we look at the code, for you to follow along this video, you need to have Docker, Sandbox, and PyTeal installed and have Sandbox running a local Algram blockchain in dev mode. I will leave a link to the development environment setup video on the top right, so make sure you have your dev environment set up before you continue. Here I have a new VS Code editor opened up with the project folder, what is PyTeal? Now before you start coding an Algorand smart contract, it's recommended to create a Python virtual environment to keep your project separate from your operating machine. To do that, you want to open up your terminal. I'm going to expand it a little. And then you want to do python -m -vmv space vmv. That is going to create the vmv folder. Then to activate your virtual environment, you want to do source vmv slash bin slash activate. Now if you do pip list, you can see that you're starting from a clean slate. So first thing you want to do is install PyTeal. To do that, you want to do pip install PyTeal. And if you do pip list again, you can see that the PyTeal is installed. Now you're all ready to start coding. Now for the sake of time, I'm going to use a completed example, but if you really want to learn how to write PyTeal smart contracts, you should follow along by coding for yourself. Now I'm inside the what is PyTeal folder and inside of it, I created a counter.py file where I'm going to write the code for my counter smart contract. And then I created an artifacts folder where all of the approval program, clear program, and the, my ABI is going to go when I compile my program. Now, first thing I do is I import PyTeal in and let's first look at this thing called a router. So whenever you write a PyTeal smart contract, you want to set up the router first because this is like a command center that tells the smart contract, hey, you run this method when you get this kind of application call, you do this when you get a create application call, and basically it handles routing for all of the incoming application calls. Now here inside of the router class, the first argument is going to be the name of the router. I called it symbol counter. And as a second argument, I put in the bear call actions. Inside of the bear call actions, you want to specify what happens during creation, during opt-in, and all the other on-complete application calls. Since this is a simple example, I've only defined what happens during creation of the application. And if you look at the definition here, you can see that the rest of the on-complete actions are default to never, which means to never approve these incoming on-complete application calls. Now, at, inside the create only, as an argument, I'm putting in this handle creation variable. And you can see that I've defined that above over here. And handle creation is basically a variable that holds a PyTeal expression. Now, this PyTeal expression is a sequence. So inside of the sequence, there are going to be multiple PyTeal expressions. And all of them have to go through for this sequence to go through. And a line for what we're doing here is we're creating a global state by doing app.global put. 
the key of the global state is called count in bytes, and the default value of that global state will be an int value of zero. So in other words, when we're creating this application, this is going to initialize a global state called count to zero. Great, now coming down here in line 16, we have an increment method. And you can see that this increment method is decorated by this router.method. This decorator is registering this increment method to the router class that we've defined up here so that the router knows when to execute this increment method. Now going inside, we create a scratch var of teal type.un64 that is creating a temporary storage on the virtual machine that will go away afterwards. And we're assigning that to scratch count variable. And this increment method is returning a pi teal expression. In line 19, we're getting the global state count by doing app.globalget, and then we're storing that value in the scratch variable. And then we're going to write a new value to the count global state. And the new value will be the value that is in the scratch variable right now by doing scratch count.load. And we're going to add int one to that. So this is essentially going to increment the count by one. And down here, we have a read count method. And whatever comes after the star in the parentheses is an output. And we can see here that the read count is going to output a UN64 type. And this is returning a PyTeal expression where output is set to the global state count that we get by doing app.globalget. So that's a simple counter example written in PyTeal. Now, down here, when I run this file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile the program by doing router.compile program. And I'm specifying the version here as version 6. This is going to spit out three values, an approval program in teal, clear program in teal, and the contract ABI JSON file. And down here, I'm taking these three values, and I'm going to dump those values into the file system. So if you open up a terminal and run python counter dot pi, that is going to write the three values into the file system. So if you come to the what is PyTeal folder, and inside of the artifacts folder, we have the three files written here. The approval.teal, which is a teal program of the smart contract that we've written, the clear program written in teal, and the contract.json file, which is an ABI specification for the front end. Now let's try deploying this simple counter smart contract and calling the increment method to see if it works. To do that, I'm going to use a development tool called Dapplub. This is a web-based development tool for Algorand, and you can come to this website by going to dapplub.org. I'm going to open the application. And with that flow, you can connect to your sandbox by going over here, clicking sandbox and save. Now, whatever you see on the Dapflow website is going to be the current state of your sandbox blockchain. Now, before doing anything else, you want to create a dev wallet. You can come over here and click create wallet to create a developer wallet that you can use to play around with. And you can click the dispense button right here to automatically dispense 10 algos to your account. Come down here, click the connect wallet button, and then connect to your dev wallet that you created. Now come to the ABI studio, and this is where you can use the contract.json ABI file that we got before to deploy and call your counter smart contract. To do that, you want to click on import ABI, go to file, upload file, and find the folder that you wrote your smart contract in. Go to the artifacts folder and then import in the contract.json file. And as you can see, you can see the name of the router over here and the two external methods that we have defined over here, increment and read count. Before we call these methods, we want to create this application. To do that, come to create app, go to bare. And then here, first, we want to specify how much storage this smart contract uses. Our counter example only has one global state that is a UN64 type. So we're going to have this as zero, one for global int, zero for both local bytes and local ints. Then upload your approval program, upload your clear program. These are all in your artifacts folder and then click create. Now you'll see the message application created successfully. Now let's try reading the default count value. So I'm going to go to read count 
And if I click execute, you can see that the value is set to zero now. If you quickly go back to our code, this is because during creation, we have created a global state called count and initialize it to zero. Going back to that flow, now I'm going to click increment. I click execute. You can see the method executed successfully. And if you go back to read count and execute that again, you can see that the value updated to one. That flow is really great if you want to do quick checking while you're developing your smart contract. And you can use the ABI Studio to do what I just did right here. I'm going to be using that flow a lot in this PyTeal video series, so don't worry if you don't fully understand how to use it right now. Today we took our first glance at what PyTeal is, how it works under the hood, and saw a simple counterexample to get a feel of what a PyTeal program looks like. Now we're going to go deeper into core PyTeal concepts and make you a PyTeal master by the end of this series. So let's get started.